I love you. Huh? What is that? Okay, you are going to listen to this children's song? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Take away fear, in God they trusted. 
This is the best thing I've heard, but anyway, could you just do one thing, all of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and you sit together and put that into a tape, and on the other side of the tape will be Khalsa, Sacred Khalsa, and uh, the five blood ones, and by the children, and complete it, and uh, I like to have it tonight late. I work. <laughs> yes, sir. I work late night, so you can <laughs> call me anytime. Huh? <laughs> I agree. This is something is worth sharing. There's no reason why not. Thank you very much. Oh my God, these are all my sleeping girls? <laughs> Far out. I never, I thought this is some imported stuff, but that's real. You see, they slept all through six weeks <laughs> and before one week out they dressed up and they sang the most beautiful song. So who can decide who's who? I can't. <laughs> it's fantastic. In our life, we are not sure and never we should be sure that everything is going to be perfect, smooth, beautiful, wonderful and all that. Whosoever promises you makes fool out of you. Even the astrologers, the stars, the psychics and all that stuff, and five hundred lifetimes in the past and seven, two hundred, thirty thousand lives in the future. With all that, 
knowledge and knowing and understanding, you cannot survive, period. Because your survival is based on impact. Your survival is not based on you. It's a great misunderstanding that you think by the power of the money, you can buy things and sell things by the power of the money, you can do things the way you want it, and you know, you can manipulate, you can argue, you can reason, you can convince. You have a lot of things going for you. But in reality, the only thing which shall work is what your impact is. You would say like that, oh, that person, hmm, forget it. Why? Hmm, never done it. Never done a thing. Just like that. That is the interlock impact. Everybody knows everybody, but everybody does not say anything to anybody. It, when it comes to the dealing and it comes to the reality, and when you are directly involved and your impact has to be interlocked with anybody's impact you know, then you know which way to go. Normally, oh, yeah, every, everything is fine, which is not true. So basically, in the realism, we are all power hungry, we are conquerors, we are killers, we are, you know, territorialists, we are competitors and name a thing. We are a lot which we don't want to be and we are a lot what we say we are not, but in reality we are we who we are. There are certain instincts, certain our feelings, certain our things which we we all want a quick buck, we all want to make great money, we want, you know, God bless us, some may say. But uh, we have not to forget that the reality of our life is our inflow from all areas, all seven things must flow in and must create an impact. And then under that impact we are locked in. And anybody we are going to deal with in friendship or in hatred, it is that impact. I had a call today from Vancouver. It's a very surprising call. Well, I did return the call. I said, what is going on? He said, figure it out. Is there any way? Sikh Dharma can survive. I said, this Sikh Dharma will survive. But why are you are raising this question? I said, it's not a question of vengeance. I suppose not to tell you, but something is bothering me to tell you. At this situation, the implied situation is, There's a definite attempt to see the Sikh Dharma is destroyed. I say, yeah, there's a definite attempt the cottonwood tree be destroyed. I say, what is definite attempt? What do you mean by definite attempt? You mean this lawsuit or many other suits which will follow and many things will happen? I said, you just understand between where Moses started and where Moses ended, it is two and a half year drive straight walk. And it could be walked that way. <coughs> Moses could have taken his followers from the place they were freed, walk straight to the <coughs> Red Sea, whatever, where the seas split, and gone through the desert. And a powerful man who can make the sea split or knew by that version of time it was split. And would have walked all with his people and it would have taken two years and six months, five to six months, they would have reached the promised land. Moses took 40 years. By the time children were grown up men and they have their children, 
because going through those 40 years, going through the styles, going through the life, going through the land, going through lot of people, going through lot of situation, by the time they reached promised land, they were in rightful position to defend it, live it, and have it. And it is called process of investment and growth. It never happens in a day. You take Sikh Dharma from the time of Guru Nanak and to today, you will surprisingly find it that this is the one religion which has been always challenged and shall continue to be challenged. No, you are going to blame on anything. No, you are going to blame on anything because it is fundamental, is religion in which each individual shines up, Obarian, comes up. And whenever you come up, you shall be challenged. It's automatic law. It's a law of life that the young bull will try to take the old bull. It's a law the young lion will try to oust the old lion and take away the pride. There are certain natural laws. And whenever in the sophisticated life you stand out, you shall be challenged. So basically when your impact of reality, of life, is going to interlock itself with other situations, you are supposed to be intelligent enough to understand that in that impact, your inflow from all areas is intact. Therefore, every time when you make a move, you have to understand you are not the life. You are a part of the life. Your impact is going to interlock with not another impact, but the part of impact. Your inflow is always the inflow for you and all that inflow in you is coming from other sources. So you are absolutely in this life intertwined. You are not individual ever, neither were, nor is, nor can be. And the greatest destruction is when you want to be you alone. It's not a reality. You live in the city, you city goes on a garbage strike, you will smell to death. Look what happened in Philadelphia. They just struck, they said, we are not going to carry the garbage. City was just in a hell of a living. Our individual, that is what divine right of king was, that we gave, all common men gave their right to the king, and king was supposed to defend them and tax them and take care of them. And Look at the government. The federal government taxes us and does what it wants to do, and if we don't pay the taxes, they put us in jail. And some of us do not even make money to live. They do not pay them. Your question is that one who... And this whole situation, if you look at it, you and the government, you and the society, the person who can swim through making least ripples is going to have a lot of success. The idealistic situation is keep your individuality and keep your society. When you deal with anybody other than you, deal at mutual coexistence. Remember this word, mutual coexistence. Mutual coexistence doesn't mean you have to butter somebody, you tell somebody, just, just, just be reasonable because your input and other input is going to interlock the impact.
and that's the reality of life it's not secret of success is not what you know secret of success is not what you have secret of your success is that you make headway and you make deep roots at no offense to you because if you offend somebody you hurt somebody you hurt somebody you're in trouble just understand 18 years we have been calm and quiet and slowly there was some leadership which could not be the leadership they left they could not deliver the leadership I mean, so you can make somebody a leader but it is not essential that they will deliver the leadership and when they did not deliver the leadership they had no way to just be the leaders so they decided not to humble themselves but to leave but they are interlocked you have to understand that so they couldn't leave so we always in this 3HO has a dropout center always I mean, from day one and now this dropout center is developed into lawsuits you know now the flag bearer of this foundation Sardarni Mukhya Sardarni Saiba Sardarni Premka Kaur Khalsa these Secretary General claims in the case that's her claim that this dharma is a racketeer that's her case and collecting the swand or asking any collection and money is racketeering that's her claim in the case and do you know for all these years she's the one who was sending the letters are you aware of that you must have received those letters she was the one who was in charge of it initiated it develop it and worked it and now she says I am racketeering you can't find one letter from my side asking you to pay this one there's none and this is the lawsuit can you believe anybody of you on oath that Mukhya Sardarni Saiba Sardarni Premka Kaur Khalsa was a hostage or a captive for 18 years can you believe it by any fluke of chance she's the most traveled individual of her time she has visited all the ashram she was free to do what she could do but I'm just explaining to you the impact is lost but impact is interlocked and she is five months pregnant today and before you left I said Pramga my dear love and child of the Guru I want to tell you certain things and she said what I say you told me to fix this marriage I have fixed it but just remember with a child or two you're gonna come back don't burn the bridges and she said what now I said just give me a period of grace so that I can just do it in a way which is just befitting to you not befitting to me you are not an ordinary person and you can't do certain things which you are trying to do what else I say here the life is paid in your world where you're going you have to pay the bills and you're not going to like it Then she told me, God above me, in Guru's presence, you will be proud of me. Here we go. Because 
the impact is interlocked. It cannot be separated. Love has turned into hatred. Life has turned into misery. Higher consciousness has turned to lower consciousness. There's nothing to it. And we are all responsible for our life, remember this. We are all responsible for our miseries. If you want to know, am I responsible for my miseries? Yes. Yes. If tomorrow I am asked to deny anyone, I shall not. And majority of the time I'm told I'm insane and I accept it. It does take that kind of insanity to have that kind of compassion, to have that kind of kindness, to respect an individual who does not deserve respect, to trust an individual who does not deserve trust, to love an individual who does not deserve to be loved. I am not saying that I am right. All I am saying is I am duty bound. It is the character of the Siri Singh Saab to be utmost compassionate and whosoever is going to walk in my shoes has to be much more than even me. Otherwise don't ask for that chair. That chair has unseen nails which can go in every butt. And there's no ifs and buts at that chair. When you sit in that chair and you weigh yourself, you totally have to forget that you remotely even exist. There's no way out. If I Chief Religious Administrative Authority of the Sikh Dharma fails to be compassionate, fails to be kind, fails to be inspiring, fails to be confronting, then I'm going to lead a tradition which will be nothing but a disaster, which will be total betrayal of the Dharma itself. Because with everything impact is locked. Exactly that way you don't exist. I'm not telling you to believe it. I am telling you it is the truth. You don't exist. There's no way you look around. Don't look to me. Look around and find it out. Search deep. Understand it. You will come to the one answer. You don't exist. But you have to exist. The only way you can exist if you let the flow flow and let the impact be the impact and let the interlocked be convenient, harmonious and easy. Otherwise you will head for a disaster. Therefore in your life Blaming, nagging, yelling, screaming, fighting. Doesn't mean anything. I mean, if 
few years ago, I was told, in the openness I live, it's not desirable. I live in the cross, the street, in the corner, anybody gonna walk in, there's no big deal. There's nothing removed. But in that, nothing removed, there is a hope. And if you cannot give anybody hope, what you can give? God gives everything. You can't reject or discard or... Because law of life is based on law of compassion. Compassion and kindness is the basic fundamental life. This young girl, where is she? Who's, who's, uh, who was talking to me when I was leaving? Are you here? What's her name, That my German girl? Are you here somewhere? <coughs> oh, does she exist right there? Yeah. Okay, now look at this situation. Years and years, I have told her one thing. Reaction is not the way of life. I'm telling her, I'm telling all of you. Whenever you react, you are mentally un unbalanced because you are playing the game of somebody who's playing with you. You have the right to act. You never have the right to react, but when you are going to react, you are going to lose. Every person will draw you out. And I told you this morning that in love and in anger, people speak truth. But here, the definition is different. Here is that in love, they lie, because they want to achieve. That, that is a different game. That's not a game which I am relating to. Motivation. If you have motivation to get a girl and to suck her into and all that, that's a different situation. Or you have to file a lawsuit, you have to make certain statement and certain allegation. Because you sometimes forget that once you make allegations, you have to prove them one way or the other. The idea of this law case was that before the Peace Prayer Day, we'll come out with a big stunt of publicity and serious things of these kind of allegations will fall apart. Well, first of all, I am always falling apart. There's nothing to fall apart. And I have never forgotten one thing, that whenever I am to fight. I am very calm, sober and serene. Because fighting is not for me to win and lose. For me, fighting is the part of life. That's why if I say, once in my life I love you, I'll never back off, doesn't matter what. I was telling last night, I say, I don't care what happens to me. If tomorrow Kate and Premka comes back and need a shelter, I shall provide. It may mean that I am end up myself divorced. It may. It may. And it may mean that the Khalsa Council may pass a resolution to remove me as Sri Singh Sahib. 
it may I'm not saying now but I shall not deny the privilege of the house of Guru to anybody doesn't matter is a friend or enemy and you watch my words after having two one or two kids she has to come back she knows it too just to understand when Karta Prakha was here resident secretary she couldn't handle the ranch and with the lawsuit what she gonna handle when Pramka had this whole dharma under her pen, she couldn't deal with it. What's she going to deal now? It was all hers. That's what I'm trying to relate to you. That just understand in your life there is a one impact and one and only one. It must stand above all. It's not a matter of love and hatred, lose and win, victory and defeat. It is you and God within you. It is you, the little one, the finite one, and you, the infinite one. It is the inflow. This person that's sitting there like this, she told me, I have been tortured. And I was laughing, Tan Guru Arjun Dev, Tan, Tan Guru Arjun Dev. She has been tortured. She's a Sikh. And look at Guru Arjun Dev. Five days and five nights, sitting on a hot plate, having a sand on his head, hot sand burning, 108 temperature. And still calm and quiet and said, Vahe Guru. And she was telling me that she has been tortured. And her torture was, she spit it at him, and he did something to her. I mean, this is their torture, and can you believe this? What people do to each other? Sir, he's insane. Yes, if you say he's insane, then you should have some sense to make some sense to him. Why you react? Is it German way? Is it Dutch way? Is it Spanish way? Is it Mexican way? Is it Californian way? Or it is a divine way? That deal everything through kindness, through compassion, through nobility, through grace. You may lose a case, but never lose a grace. <laughs> you can miss the time, never miss the chime. Be very charming, beautiful. Learn human life is a gift and experience. It gives you the time to display your totality. Understand? This universe, you can't live more than a hundred years, can you? Huh? Then, what's the big deal? First ten years, food and milk, ten, next ten years, friends and this, then after the girls and boys, after that money and status, after that children and family, after that uh, glasses and uh, blood pressures and, and an honor. <laughs> what is it? 
I remember how many of you among women are 36? Raise your hands. You're all 36? 36 and above. 36 and above. Do you want to live young? Is it? Just start living on one meal. Good one meal. I was surprised to today to listen from Dr. Allen. I was, he was, he's now working very hard and sharp and all that. And I said, well, Allen, how you do all this? Well, it's no problem. Little salad and mung bean and rice, one meal a day. And I said, you? He said, from last eight years. So I've eaten nothing. I eat mung bean and rice and little salad. That's it. After 36, if you want the body to be young, and you have no other secret, just have one secret, eat one meal, good one, big lunch, <laughs> and after that, adios. This dieting and this suffering and this ups and down and my butts and this and that and all that stuff. You know, all New York bagels are hanging there down. And <laughs> this whole thing is useless. You don't have to do anything, just one meal a day and a big one. How about that? And after 4 p.m., you can drink whatever you want, but you shall eat nothing. It is the ancient Ayurvedic way. Because the Ayurveda eats up to 18 years, you need as much food you want and you will decide your cardiac metabolism. And other than 18 years, you will just be normal. After 36, you have no metabolism to take more food and you can digest it. I'm not asking you to eat this, eat that. I'm just asking you, try this old, old fashion. Can you do that? You know, when you come for uh, summer sauces, 10 days, we put you on that food, do you feel bad? So why can't you just carry out that in home? Is Dr. Allen's diet, mung bean and rice? With a lot of vegetable and all that, and the morning that potato celery soup, uh -huh, hot, with two oranges and one, two bananas. Have you ever thought of that, that that 10 days can be extended to a 100 day? <laughs> and that can take away all your problems? Especially in these days of economy, it's very cheap it's, and very healthy. And it's very, re oh, Hari, you have appeared. You just came down. On the clouds? Mm hmm. Hari is quite a thing. Everybody knows Hari, and Hari knows everybody. And you know, if some, some Mexican by mistake calls her Hari, his karma changes. Do you know that? Harbalo. Mere Gursik Pai Har Bolo, Har Bolo Sat Paap La Jai. Once saying Hari, 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 the sins are wiped out. Uh, where is our sectary of religion, uh, the Leo, Leo? 
uh, we are going to have an account part at the ranch and uh, Babaji says it should be done by the ladies who are camp and those who chant and read the Guru must do their best so we agreed to that so today is what day? huh? so tomorrow? tomorrow morning? what time? huh? six sharp you will start five o'clock the first word Ikkaunkar Satnam Karta Puruk will be exactly at six by New Mexico local time. <laughs> we'll do our best, whatever we can do. We'll continue. The impact and the inflow and the personality and the identity, prosperity, life, future, past, present. There are a lot of things. But over all this, you make the habit, habit makes you. It's just like laying a foundation. Some people feel but change of place, change of spouse, change of food, change of this, change of that will do good for a short while, yes. In the long run, no. Try to create the capacity of the inflow into a fundamental reality. You have to live beyond you. So long you live for yourself, you will be in pain. Doesn't matter who you are. Do you know that? The secret of success is <coughs> the science of life is and the art of living is you must live in your totality. That we'll discuss tomorrow. Totality an active personality. That will be the subject. We'll complete tomorrow and today we'll ask your permission to sit for one moment or two in a silence prayer. Just in silence prayer. May the long time sunshine.